Hello everyone, Miss Meek here, and today we are going to talk about rectangular prisms. And not just about anything about rectangular prisms, we're going to find the volume of rectangular prisms today. So first of all, let's talk about a rectangular prism. This is a rectangular prism, uh, a shoebox, a crate. Um, those are rectangular prisms. They are very, very common in everyday life. Bins and boxes, Amazon boxes, all of those things are rectangular prisms. Drawers, a lot of drawers and cabinets and things like that are rectangular prisms. So there's a couple important things about a rectangular prism that we're going to talk about. Uh, it's made up of rectangles. So if you notice on a rectangular prism, all of the faces here are rectangles. So like up here, this whole thing is a rectangle. This is a rectangle face. Okay, this is a rectangle face. All of the faces of this box are rectangles. That's why it's called a rectangular prism. Now we're focused on volume today. We've been talking a lot about area in a lot of the other videos. And so let's talk about what is volume. Volume is how much something can hold. And it's for three dimensional figures. That is what a rectangular prism is. It's a 3D figure, a three dimensional figure. And so this box can hold something, liquid, things, what, whatever it is, okay? Um, and so volume is how much the capacity this shape has to hold. Um, and so that is what we're going to be working on. Now for a rectangular prism, our formula here in sixth grade is volume equals a capital B times H. So V, of course, stands for volume. And you may be wondering about this capital B. This capital B stands for the area of the base. That's where that capital B comes from. And then, of course, H is height. Now, you be, might be wondering about the area of the base. They're talking about this down here. This is the base of the shape. And so to find the area of the base, you have to multiply the base times the height or in our younger terms, uh, the length times the width. So the area of the base, technically what they're trying to find there is the length times the width. And then after you do that, you can multiply times the height. So let's talk about let's talk about all of the different things on this uh, on this prism that I'm going to have to know about. So again, remember real quick that this area of the base is your length times your width, and then after that we're going to multiply it by our height. So a couple of things we need to know about. First of all, height is how tall this box is. So height is going to be how tall this box is. This is your height. Your length, okay, is going to be how, of course, long your box is. This is your length, okay. And then, of course, your width is going to be how wide your box is. Okay, so again, our terminology for volume kind of changes a little bit because we have to find the area of the base. And the way that we find the area of a rectangle is either base times height. And here we... Uh, we aren't going to use our height, so we have to revert back to those words that we used to know, which is length times width. So another way that you can think of your volume formula is volume equals length times width times height. So that's another way you can think about your volume formula. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve some here. So again, write your volume formula. My volume formula, again, is volume equals big B times H, and remember that big B right there is length times width, length times width. So let's label our pieces, all right? This 10 is how tall my shape is, that is the height, so from here to here it's telling me how tall the shape is. My, um, my length here is going to be the two centimeters or two inches. And then my width is how uh, wide the shape is. And so that is going to be my four. So to find big B here, okay, it is going to be the length, which is two, times the width, 
which is 4. So big B is 2 times 4, which is 8. And then after we figured that out, we multiply times our height, which is 10. And so volume for this shape is going to equal 80. And this is going to be inches. Now our units change because with area, they were to the second power. Remember, because we were multiplying like inch times inch. Now we're multiplying inch times inch times inch, three of them. So our units are going to be to the third power now. So volume is 80 inches to the third power. Let's do another one. So again, write your formula. Remember that big B right here is length times width. Label your picture. Here is my height, H. Here is my length, L. And here is my width, which is 3. My big B is going to be that length of 9 times that width of 3, which is 27. So big B is going to equal 27. And then we're going to multiply it times H, which is 5. So my volume is going to equal 27 times 5. I'm going to work that out over here to the side. And I get my volume is 135 feet. And remember, it's feet times feet times feet. So feet to the third power. And that's how you find volume. You identify your numbers and multiply them together. Uh, sometimes in sixth grade here, we may ask you about the area of the base. Like, what is the area of the base? So make sure you're prepared to answer what that big B is going to equal. And remember, big B is just length times width. So big B is the area of the base of this shape. And so that is going to be your length times your width there. Now, another thing that they may have you do is find the missing dimension. When this happens, this is when they give you the volume and you have to work backwards to find something that's missing. So take a look here at number one. Again, I always write my volume formula. I always write my volume formula. And then um, I plug in those numbers so that way I can find the missing thing. Okay. So first of all, let's identify the things that we have. I am missing my H. I do not have my height at all. However, I do have my length. It's just way up here in the sky. And then I also have my width. So that's five centimeters right there, okay? So let's see if we can plug these things in and figure out volume. Oh, and by the way, guys, I have my volume. That's what V equals down here. This is telling me my volume. So I'm gonna plug all of these numbers in. That's 100. Big B here is length times width. So I have my length, which is 10. And I have my width, which is 5. So big B here is 5 times 10, which is 50. And then remember, I don't know what my height is. Okay? When I plug everything in, look, I have a simple equation that I can solve. I'm going to divide by 50 on both sides. And when I do that, these 50s cancel and I'm left with H and then 50 divi uh, 100 divided by 50 is 2. Now this is one of my dimensions and so my unit is just going to be centimeters. There's no little 3 or 2 or anything on it, just centimeters by itself. All right, let's try another one here. So again, volume equals big B times H. All right, um, let's identify the things that they gave me. So they did give me my volume right here. They did give me my height. So I have my height. It's right here. And they did give me my length, which is right here. Now the thing that I'm missing is my width. I don't know what my width is, okay? So let's plug all of those numbers into my formula. Now something that I notice is I'm missing my width, which means I can't solve my big B. So instead of writing big B, I'm going to write everything out separately. I'm going to have my length times my width times my height. So I know that my length is 6. I don't know what my width is, and I know that my height is 4. So I multiply together the things that I can multiply together, and um, I can multiply this 6 times this 4. So I get 120 equals 64W, or sorry, 24W. I can divide by 24 on both sides, and when I do that, these 24s go away and leave me W. I'm going to have to write my answer up here. Sorry about that. I ran out of space. And 120 divided by 24 is 
five. So my final answer here is five millimeters. All right, y'all, I hope that this answered any of your questions or any of your uh, fixed any of your confusion that you may have had about volume or finding the missing dimension in a volume problem. I'll talk to you later. Bye.